Oh my god, that's so <laughs> Yeah, it's bugged out. Well, right, now you gotta tell me how you did it. Come on, light son. Work, Come on, guys. son. This is like when light. you this go is... to his show, it's like we we didn't even know what to say. I kept going, how? Even Yo, how? he doesn't know. I don't know this man. Wait, you've never we have no correspondence, them? nothing. No. Bro, you've never texted with him. No. I don't know. I, I met him at the show. We've never talked. From New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, Ebro in the morning is the program. This is Laura Styles. Hello. That's Rosenberg. And we want to introduce you to, if you don't know, a dope ass magician. Have you ever been called a dope ass magician? Uh, this might be the first. <laughs> An amazing magician, Dan White. Give it up for him. Now, Rosenberg, you didn't see the show. Lauren, I went. I know, I know. The I show's know. amazing, bro. God. That's what I've heard. At the Nomad Hotel. I Listen. I right here in Manhattan, New York City. Yes, I found out about it. And I was bugging Ebro. I'm like, Ebro, because he knows. He knows how, how I feel about magic. About it? A friend of a friend. And then yeah. I Googled it. And then I was like, we have to go here. And first of all, I didn't realize how hard it is to get the tickets. Okay? It's, it's like your fans are like crazy on demand. But I was bothering Ebro like, we have to go. So we went. Now, <laughs> mind you, um, I'm a skeptic. Okay, um, we've had hyp hypnosis up here before. And I didn't. Oh. I was like, didn't do anything for me. I was just kind of like, I'm not hypnotized. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, we went to a party in Toronto at All Star Weekend. Yes. Um, David Blaine was there. Oh wow. And you know, I'm smoking weed with some friends, and it's just like a party. It's a house party. So, but anyway, David Blaine starts like frogs start jumping out of his mouth and i'm like uh, okay you so you had some frogs in your mouth so i'm a skeptic right that's a stunt to me but she <laughs> right, didn't get to it's see it impressive. Yeah. it's impressive yes, like, how she could didn't get to like see it and normal. she's been upset the entire time so we get to your show um the the way the show is put together first of all how intimate it is incredible like I, i've never been anything like that before so you strongly recommend this experience well yes. it's what it's 50 people yeah, about uh, 50 to 70. It's a small yeah. room, so you're literally, I mean, he's right there. So it's not like you're at some big stage and some big theatrical and thing. And how long is the show? Uh, it's about two hours total. There's a, the intermission in it. So, uh, I mean, probably about an hour and a half worth of just pure magic. Wow. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? The show I've been doing for about three years now. Uh, but I've been doing magic since I was 10 years old. So that was the most interesting piece about the whole thing because you get up there, well, a character, an old man. Can, yeah. Am I allowed? Is that proper think, etiquette to yeah, talk yeah. about I what happens? I think we don't want to... It's sort of... Treat it like a movie. Yes. Like okay. this, the, the ending things, the things that really surprise you, those would be spoilers. Yeah, I'm not going to do, do that. I mean? I'm not going to do like, that. So. Um, but I, I do want to say that it... But it's put together like a movie. And he talks about his life. And he... You know, there's a storyline. And um, talk about being a, a kid who wants to do magic. Because I'm sure there's tons of kids who fall in love with it. But to take yeah. it as far as you have... No, it's 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 one of those things I think a lot of kids fall in love with. I think a lot of us can relate to when you're a kid, you get like a magic set or some somebody teaches you a magic trick. But for me, I just never stopped doing it. You know, I I, I grew up in Philly uh, and there's this magic store there and I would go all the time and eventually I begged the people to like let me work there and they're like, fine, we'll let you work there, but we're not going to pay you, but you're going to learn magic. Mm. So that was fine with me. So, you know, just from doing that, uh, every single day over and over again and reading every single book and and that's the thing with magic is like there's no schools for it you know there's no place to really learn it you just got to do it on your own and and that's what's great about it because it's just the your own initial drive to learn is the only thing that will really teach you full circle he ended up looting that same store this weekend <laughs> <laughs> after the super bowl uh, wait so was there one particular <laughs> magic trick you saw or something that was like your your holy shit moment when you're like oh there, my god yeah when i was young there were a few of them like i remember the first time i saw them like link the rings together I was just I couldn't figure it out. It was like it was bothering me so much. Uh, and then when I saw David Copperfield for the first time, that like just he like did this thing where he flies across the stage. Uh, and I've been really into like Superman and superheroes at the time. And then I was like, oh, I'm seeing this thing in real life now. Uh, and then I was like, wait, if somebody can do it, then I can do it. I'm Is Copperfield the goat? I'd say so. Yeah, is he? I'd say you, so. You think that's widely seen? Like people yeah. will go back to Copperfield. How old is David Copperfield? Um, geez, I'm not even sure. I think Do you he's know in his 60s. Yeah, no, no. I, that's the crazy part is that right. he was the one who really like set it off for me when Whoa. I was a kid. And uh, a few years ago, I started working with him, you know, oh, and amazing. helping him with his illusions and creating wow. some tricks for him. And you know, it, that was it's almost really, like an understudy of sorts, or like a. It was sort of like a consultant. Okay, yeah, a consultant. I guess that's the the, the right term 
term for it, but it was like, you know, I mean, wow. well, from this is the guy who's been your hero the whole right. life. I mean, there's so many stories like that in every art form, uh, but but for me, that was just like, it was. It was I also. Top. I also read that you did some consulting on the Yeezus tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did that come about? Um, you know, it's it was just sort of series of events that led me to to meet Kanye, and we sort of hit it off, and and uh, you know, creatively, I think we jived really well, and that tour. Uh, you know, although there was no like, have you you saw the tour? Yes. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, there was stage no, like, was levitating, right? Yeah. Stage <laughs> had a there was no like real like pure like just moment of magic. It was all about like creating that sense of wonder, uh, and you know, for me, that's what I love about magic, and that's what I tried to do with the show the yeah. most. Is not so much to be like, oh, we're just I'm just gonna do stand up here and do ten tricks or whatever. It's like I just want to create a feeling. Of wonder, and I felt like with, with Jesus, that's you know what he did and what we did was create like this great. Wonder I, I think feeling. that's what I found most intriguing about your show for me myself yeah. as a skeptic. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> was there ever a moment when you did a trick and Kanye went, "How did?" <laughs> 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 All right, sorry, continue. <laughs> he came to the show too. He, he, oh yeah. Yeah. The, if since for the people who've seen the show, he did the last trick with the thing with the cards where I threw them. Right, right, oh, right, yes. right, 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 right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Well, yeah you yeah, actually yeah. brought me up on stage. I, I was. I was kind of nervous, I can't lie, because I've never been in a magic show right. before. I'm not going to tell the whole well, trick. Well, that's the other thing, is I try to make everybody feel comfortable. I hope you feel comfortable. Yeah, I, it was totally I, fun. Like, it was if, fun. If, if, if there's ever a point like where you're feeling like super, you know when you go to comedy shows sometimes and then it starts just yeah. like ragging on you? Yeah, that's yeah, the exact yeah. opposite feeling that I want to have, because people already hate magicians. Like you really? want to hate magicians? What yeah, I love they do. magicians. They doubt, no, magicians. They doubt magicians. They, the whole time, it's just like you're saying. They're skeptical. Skeptics. Okay. It's like, oh, this guy's or you're lying devil to me, yeah. or this guy. You know, <laughs> for me, it's like, yeah, that's the. I mean, I know that that's the feeling, but I also, you know, sometimes if I knock that barrier down a little bit, I want them to have fun. You know, that's that's the biggest. Point. So I, I did notice, and I had never paid attention to the actual performance art of a magician before like the actual uh like you said the creating an atmosphere of wonder and just the the uh, i guess i don't want to say you had a script but you had a show like it was a it was a performance piece all the way through and then you had obviously have to ad lib with the audience yeah. you need to keep a certain pace for things to happen i noticed that um how long does it take for you to perfect what i saw at the nomad it's, I mean, it's still in the works. You know, it's funny because I don't necessarily ever, I never wrote out a script. Uh, it was me generally coming up with ideas for things and I would say them and if things felt good, then I kept them and if they didn't, it was all sort of a live editing process. Mm. Uh, so nothing's really like ever fully done and we add new things uh, all the time. So if I were to go back to the show, I may see something a little different. Generally, the show would be the same because there's a few staples that I think are, like you were saying, pacing so right. important. So there's a few staples that keep the pacing of the whole thing going, but then we'll add in new things. Like the, the night that you came, it was one of the first times we ever did that thing uh, with the cards coming out of the deck. Oh, with the really? Shadows. That was like one of the first times. So, wow. Um, Bruh. That was, we were like, I can hit And Quest bro. Love, Quest Love <laughs> was there. And can, can I say yeah. it? Yeah. So I, I don't know how he yeah. was doing it, but the cards, he was like, uh, he was calling cards out of a deck, a random deck that he had flipped through. You can see it's a regular deck. He put it in like a, a cup, a cup, yeah. uh -huh. like a glass, a wine glass. And the cards were like raising up out of the glass that he was calling. It was nuts. And even Quest Love went and grabbed the card and like, you could clearly see nothing was attached to the card. Yo, Questlove did a magic trick the other day. <laughs> I ran into him at a party. He didn't recognize me. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was truly magical. Um, first Is this? But well, I'm, first of all, I'm, bl I'm blown away. By, I'm blown away by that, and I have to go see the show. And you told me about a couple things that I don't want to give away. Yeah, yeah. That I truly couldn't understand. Do you get frustrated with? And I keep thinking because of my passion for pro wrestling right i keep thinking of a similarity which yeah. is people love it mm -hmm. but there's also a segment of people who are angered by the 
not understanding where the lines go, oh, right. and they want to go. No, no, no. That that's not well, real. So does that bother you when you when you see people who watch wrestling or some people? You know, their immediate reaction to wrestling is, "Oh, it's all fake." Yes. Does that bother those people? Bother you? Yes. I, gotcha. I didn't. I used to understand it more, and now that I work there and I'm closer to it, I get a little more offended by the word fake. Yeah. Because I always just want to say it's like I'm going to start going to movies and in the middle of the movie stand up and be like, "This is fake. Exactly. This whole movie's fake." I don't understand why certain forms of entertainment people feel the need to try to. It's almost like yeah. they're mad. People because do do they it with understand. movies, though. People right. do do it with movies. They yell that it's fake. They don't yell that it's fake. They just don't go see movies that are like fantasy, or they don't Got like it. movies that are sci-fi, or they don't like horror movies because so they're like, like they're it's angered. fake. It's like they're angered by it not being. Um, it's just not what they're into. Something they like, understand. Yeah. yeah, but isn't that every art? Do you know, like, when the first time somebody painted painted a, a boar on the wall, it's like, yeah, that's not a boar, but we're making a, a physical so representation. Using your imagination, you know, you're exactly. doing other things, right? But I, I guess because I hear you working with David Copperfield, is is being a magician like is Copperfield still active? Yeah, he does a show every single night, twice a night at the MGM in Vegas. Like, I didn't, he I didn't even know that. Stop. I didn't even know that. Did Not he have any, he goes so yeah, well, you hard. Know, there's so many dope people who perform in Vegas every night yeah, that yeah, we're, yeah, you know, yeah. we're removed from it. That's did, true. Did you um did he have any response to George W to George H. W. Bush using the line David Copperfield when he um, would grab one of that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Not about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I guess my question is is as a magician, because there is a physical element, right? Yeah. You're up there and you're engaged with the audience, like what kind of fatigue level yeah. For you, for your mind and kind of your yeah, energy. That's a great question, man. That's seriously because no, I'm watching you and that. I'm like, yo, this is like, how often are you doing that show? Uh, six times a week. Shoot. Six times a week. So yeah, it's not two-hour show. David. Six times a week. Yeah, not as many David, but but your timing's got to be right. It's yeah. close proximity with people. There's different energy in the room all the time. Probably bad attitudes at times yeah. or skeptics at times. Well, it's, it's so that, since the, I love that question because now I don't get that asked very often, but it's it's an adrenaline thing. So so for me, I always have to be like on, you know. And I mean, you guys experience this in the morning. I experience it at night, but like I have to be on during that show. So so because I'm like hyping myself so much. I get like these weird adrenaline crashes afterwards. So that's like the real big body mm. toll I'd, I'd say is it's like trying to get up all this adrenaline and then, you know, I have to go to sleep. It's, and, like, it's not a mental toll. It's, it's, a, it's a, a mental, it's a mental physical, you know, it's, it's the adrenaline does affect your body. I get like these adrenaline hangovers. And what sure. about what Ebro's saying? The, um, can you sense when there's a bunch of skeptics in the oh, room? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. And because the room's so small, you know, I'm really playing to the audience, but the audience is really 50% of the show itself. You know, so so it's not like there's like 2,000 people and you just go out and you do your thing and you don't have any interaction. This whole thing is all about interaction. So because of that, if there's a, a group of people who are like just wasted mm. and that can make the show feel a different way, or if mm. there's people who hecklers are like hecklers yeah, that yeah, can yeah. make the yeah, show yeah, feel yeah. a different way. Uh, so so it's... It, uh, four people could change the entire dynamic right, of right, the right. entire thing. Do kids go to your show? Sometimes, you know, we have a like a, a eighteen or older thing on the you know on the website before we sell tickets, but that's only because there's a lot of alcohol served. So you know, I don't know how some parents feel. But about you guys that. are also too in the show at the Nomad, and you could go look it up. It sells out as soon as it goes up. But you know, do your best to get on whatever list and yeah. try to go see Dan. Um, I did notice that you guys. You, you're not just running up to the bar there either. Like, you guys are very much like you can have your drinks in the first part. You order some drinks early. You can have a couple drinks in the second part. They don't just let you get wasted yeah, at the show. it's very strict, too. What do you yeah. mean? Like, so they tell you when you can order? Well, you go and you order. You order ahead of time. Ahead yeah, of time, yeah, yeah. basically. So you plan your drinks out. For, Got it. For so if you know you want half. one drink in the first half and one drink in the second half, that's what you're doing. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But then, of course, I mean, what happens? So I guess you also have to, the people who are sit down, they're like, oh, I have to order now. I will take six drinks. <laughs> yeah. like, All right. I think I did that. <laughs> I what I did is that. the difference between a, a illusionist, am I saying it correctly, yeah. and a magician? Well, another great question. Uh, in the magic sort of world, like the, the, the industry, 
uh, an illusionist refers to somebody who does the big stage stuff. So like the big, uh, you know, boxes and stuff like that. So like the things you see David Copperfield doing, that's like an illusionist in the industry. And we've got also things like mentalists who do like the, the mind reading stuff or like close up magicians who do the card stuff and the things. So, so that's just a different classification, I guess, of, of size or propage. Uh, but in, in the general like public, it gets confused. So anybody can call themselves and it's themselves what do you consider yourself to be uh, I, I would say a magician I like you know I think that's it's a strong the but magician role itself you're is mentalist too because I yeah. saw yeah. you <laughs> you read some minds you read yes. minds but the magician sort of classifies all of those things gotcha. you the know guys know I mean? in behind us I don't know if you remember the night we were there <laughs> there was an older guy behind us he might okay. have been like uh, Russian or something like he had an act oh, heavy yeah, accent yeah, with no, his wife yeah. 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 right <laughs> he was not for the games yeah yeah I think maybe his wife his came. Wife maybe he was a skeptic. He was definitely an older curmudgeon type <laughs> skeptic, like not into it. But I don't know why he you was on this guy all night because you were well, trying he caught to caught that ball. He, oh, that's right. Yeah. He caught the mm -hmm. ball, and so he blew this dude's wife's wig off. Remember? Woo! Not that she had an actual wig, but he guessed this man's daughter's name. And it wasn't like a common name. No, it was like a Russian name. All I all I heard in the back of me was like, oh my like the God, did you hear the wife get emotional? Yes. Like when you narrowed in on the daughter's name, yeah. she yeah, gets he super was, emotional. He, he was not having it either. But then at the at the end, he was like, he was like, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how do you are you single? Uh, no, married. Oh, you're married. Yeah. So how long have you been married for? Uh, two years. So prior, I guess you've been with your girl for a long time. Yeah, eight. Oh, okay. Because I was gonna say, I wonder how how curious it would be to be like a single guy who you know meets a girl out and she's like, "What do you do?" And you're like, uh, "I'm a." I'm a magician. Like it's a, it's no, a loser. I mean, it's, it's an no, check, no, please. It's no, the funny that's thing probably is, like a lot super of guys, intriguing. I mean, look, I've been a magician for a long time, so I've been through the whole thing of it. But there's there's a lot of guys who use magic. I mean, that's their whole. That's thing. a game. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Whole game. It's an amazing game, I'm sure. It's a good game. Yeah, yeah. and it's just for me, I, I never really used it like that. To be honest, just because I always felt like it was too much of a gimmick, like there's no like realness going on. But I know a lot of guys who do, and it's very successful for them. Well, because you're captivating someone and you're making them go, "Oh my God, this guy can do things I don't understand." Which so it's like a power play, in a, to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, and there's like the element of surprise and mystery and all that sort of things, which is really good. Women love in a mysterious man, yeah, don't yeah. they? It's kind of yep. Is there certain things because <laughs> I know um because sometimes well, you no because I I know like when I've seen like behind the scenes stuff with like David Blaine when he like shot himself in the in the tooth mm. I was like all right this is just too much like I can't it, I couldn't maybe because but was, also too like I'm a skeptic like I like David Blaine yeah. and I, and he's a nice me guy and I met him but that's not magic to me that's a stunt so where's where is that? Line? Do you view that as magic? Yeah, I do. The thing with with those sort of things, and I, I think there's a, a, this inherent thing with magicians where because you hear so often people are like oh that's fake that's fake that's fake there's this feeling where you're like i want to i want to do something real but that's still amazing so those sort of very selfishly i think in in magicians minds are the way to like do real magic oh, do you know what i mean because you it's can't a, argue it yeah there's nobody can say that that's fake because it's not yeah the frogs it's jumping still, out of it's still amazing the frogs you know? that he spit up at drake's house was real ass frogs that came out of his yeah, mouth. Yeah, but that's the thing. I think. Have you it, seen I that before? If, yeah. And what do you do with David? Yeah, we've well, yeah, seen David yeah, do the yeah, frogs yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Does do you do, something like that? Do you in, do you instantly because being a magician yourself go? All right, I know I know what he did there. I mean, sort of. Yeah, but I I don't. It's not in a dismissive tone. It's more of like a wow. He did that. He did that. And right. I know exactly. Right, 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 that's right. tough. Yeah, I, I worked with David for a long time, and he's 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 a good friend. And like the the, the lengths that he goes to to like do yeah. that to himself, it's definitely admirable. And for the culture, like almost yeah. for magic, he like everybody looks at it like he's continuing to push this forward to do you entertain feel that people. Absolutely. Not being named David is a disadvantage for you. A D is still good. I'll take right. the D. No, that's, that's, that's fair enough. What's the magic word? Is is the word fake? The word that makes you like kind of like cringe when someone just casually says it? Yeah, I mean that's definitely it's 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 like yeah, of course it's fake. Like I'm just gonna spend. My, I'm not claiming that I'm a wizard. I'm not claiming, but I'm trying to give you guys a sense of wonder, and that's my job is just to remind you of the things that are wonderful. You know, like there's so many amazing things that we don't understand, so many mysteries, and just a magician's just a dude who says, "Look, 
Look at it. It's cool. Doesn't mean that I'm doing is real. I'm just saying that it's there. Well, what is fake and what is real? Meaning, exactly. I guess what they're saying would be real would be if you made something, you know, literally disappear out of thin air and reappear versus it completely appears that way. Exactly. I mean, which which ones? What do you ever get the into? Right? What's the real exactly. thing? Do you have? Do you stay away from religious conversations? I try to. I mean, it, in, it, it in, get interesting in the magician world. Yeah. In the history of magic mm -hmm. and wonder and all of that, right? When you read historical books and yeah. it goes all the way back, right? And how people used the population's inability to understand science astronomy you know whatever things you know because there's obviously that has been a part of magic right Absolutely. for a long time of the fact that there are people who understand how something works better than a larger group and are able to you know create that moment for them because they don't understand something about science or something about the world around them yeah i mean it, it, it happens all the time anybody who sort of exploits knowing something that somebody else doesn't i mean it's the old con but i mean magicians as the high priestesses or you know like they it goes back yeah it goes back really far it goes all the way back and and you know it's fascinating and people have exploited it and then you know around the turn of the century 1900s a little bit earlier magicians were like okay we're going to use this for entertainment instead of or religion or deceit or right. you know things like that so that that's what, what's nice about it is that it turned into a thing that wasn't just purely religious or stealing you know um are there books for the people watching this because i, I know that there are tons of uh especially you know in and around us whether it's in black communities whether caribbean people when you start getting into talking about black magic and yeah. you start getting into these things around cultural elements of of wonder and mystery right um you know it's often been like kind of programmed in us you know you don't read about that you, right. know, you stay away from that that's mm -hmm. bad it's you know black magic it's this it's put all these bad connotations which I, I always find personally entertaining because it's ridiculous but um are there books that magicians are expected to read like that you have to know yeah there's a few definitely like standard tech textbooks of magic uh and you, you can go out and get them right from the library is it in the harry potter movie is that the <laughs> <laughs> they are not they are not oh. um uh, yeah but there, there's there's a bunch of them like just really standard works there's one set that i think every magician at one point has studied it's called the tarbell course in magic uh and it's this old book that just got put out in a series of volumes and it pretty much covers every single thing you could possibly and that's like teaching you tricks or just like the teaching you teaching you stuff and then there's you know there's definitely the whole sort of black magic side of things as well although those are you kind of spells kind of and yeah, yeah, yeah different you know uh but there's there's tons of tons of books like that as well it's funny i went down to uh uh, Miami and did a whole thing with like the Santeria of mm -hmm. witch doctors and and that was fascinating like just to see to watch the, them or yeah, they watched watch you both we sort of watched each other and it was this oh, wow. it was this weird thing where we were like we were like all right cool <laughs> at the end of it, it was like great <laughs> well because I think ultimately like you know without getting too deep into it people want to believe in something greater than themselves right Absolutely. so you know whether it's you know religion or you know. Oh, yoga, whatever it is, yeah. right? People always want to say, there's this thing that I can focus on that's going to make sure that I'm a great person and that ultimately me and my loved ones are going to be safe. Um, I think that's important for people too. I think it's important for everybody to have a sense of hope, a sense of something ahead of them. And that, I think that's what keeps us going every day. How much of what you do is straight math? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of math involved. There's a lot of math involved. Um, but it's not all math. It's not like you need to be some sort of crazy math genius to do these things. But you, you there's a few things that you definitely got to know principles and yes, things like that. Yes, because when you threw all those numbers on the board and you were filling out these equations and you know up down all around we were looking at each other like how is this possible <laughs> like that was pretty good do you ever yes. research um magicians from like the early 1900s and see how they executed certain tricks absolutely and put a Absol twist that that's a big influence on the show that we do like i wanted it to feel kind of uh you know classic but modern at the same time i mean there's especially in new york city there's so much history of magicians here uh and in that area where the nomad is you know there was like one of the best magic stores across 
across the street which was created by this guy named Okido, who is this fake Asian uh, magician like his whole thing was he dressed up he looked very Asian like Japanese Oriental Chinese whatever but he's just a guy from the Netherlands you know so so uh, in New York I think there's so much rich, rich history especially in that area that I would be dumb not to use a little bit I of never that. knew that yeah and that because that hotel was an old building that just got done like five years ago or yeah something. exactly exactly it was, it was old I forget what the original use of the building was but I feel like magicians doing interviews is dangerous <laughs> is that is this do you do a lot of interviews uh why do you say that um because i feel like it's you know i can sense that you kind of you know um don't want to give away too much obviously right yeah um but i don't know if i've seen a lot of magicians do interviews no it, you know it's funny this I and mean, i gotta applaud you guys because i really appreciate you guys talking to me which is it's it's rare because usually whenever i show up for an interview it's always like all right what your name's dan okay do some magic right 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 you know and then bye that's it so it's nice like that is another that doesn't surprise me yeah, at all I can see right. that. But it's another one of those things that's interesting about the way I just I'm fascinated at the way that um, Americans take in certain art mm. and the way that we some of it's appreciated and some of it is like do your job and get out or like you're trying to trick me I hate you right you know and I, it's just it's an interesting experience yeah it's it's just it's weird because it's like you know there's other people from other professions and it's totally cool to have an interview with them because you want it but. But with magicians, it's like, I don't know, just get, get to the trick already, you know? And I'm sure there's going to be people watching this and be like, just yep, get, to the, get trick. to the trick already. Right, now, it's going to happen right here. Well, no, I, <laughs> I, I, I actually was, I, I didn't expect you to come. Right. When they told me, like, we're going to go to a show, I was like, is he going to come for an interview? And they were kind of like, well, let's see. Like, it wasn't really like you do interviews all the time. Right. So I wasn't sure if this was even going to happen. Oh, um, right. And then I know because you, there's got to be a level of trust, right? Because we've seen the show. Yeah. Right. Um, and obviously you trusting us enough to not tell what we saw at the show so that people still want to go see the show, even though behind your back the next day I did get on the air and we talked about a few I things. Just yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear it. We okay. couldn't help it. You didn't give away that much. <laughs> no. I was going to do a joke up there, though, when it was I, when I was on stage in the envelope bit. Yeah. Can I tell it or should yeah, I? Yeah, uh, maybe not. Maybe right, not. I won't tell, tell, tell it. I won't tell it. It was a good joke. But I was the only I black guy on stage and that was going to be my joke. I will tell you, though, when we were talking about on the air, so many other people were hitting us up like, no way. How is this possible? So I feel like now it's even going to be harder to get a ticket to your yeah. show. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the downside. Yeah. Very popular show. Now, is there any sort of trick that you can do for our audience who's watching and is, you know, wants... They, they, let's not lie. I mean, people see a magician. We yeah. can't help it. The do no, some no. magic, damn it. Well, that's the thing. Is like, I understand that people want to do I'm going to do magic for you guys, but... It's nice that you also talked to me of as well. No, so I appreciate I that. It was a pleasure. Uh, wait, you want, do you want to try something? Yeah, can we do uh, something? Uh, I want you to put your, your hand on the speaker just because I know somebody's going to say something like, oh, it's some Siri or something. Okay. Okay. Uh, I Googled an image. And, you know, what, what I do is a lot about images. I like to create images. Uh, so we're, we're going to create uh, an image right now. So we'll sort of like pass it down. So if you wouldn't mind, I want you to think, seriously think of any object in the entire world mm -hmm. okay but make sure it could probably fit in this room okay okay uh, uh but but see the image of it first it's okay. important that you see the image don't think of it as a word think of it as an image mm -hmm. you got one mm -hmm. say it boobs boobs yeah Interesting. That's interesting. That's like that's the first image right. that really. Wow. Well, because he brought up Bang Bros a second ago, and Got so it. that was so just what was on my mind. Okay. But you could have said anything. You could have said chicken, TV, cameras, anything that popped in your head. Yes. Uh, and I want you to to name a color. A color. Yeah. Red. Red. Okay. So it's interesting that he said boobs, and that made you think of red, even though you might not have realized it. So if we put those together, we get red boobs that's right mm -hmm. okay that's kind of a weird image to think of like what would red boobs it's happened like? before though yeah right. but again we haven't set anything up we haven't set anything up no. that's no. your phone i haven't touched it take a look i searched an image open up your phone there's definitely uh boobs with a red bra on them <laughs> <laughs> you see everyone gather around the glass in the other room. <laughs> wow. And that that's not a that's not a, a Siri setup. There's not like a no. A I mean, we talked a lot. We've said a bunch of different things. I 
said TV. I said chicken. I said yeah. <laughs> it said Laura's boobs. Okay. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, that, that, would that happen? Would that have worked out? <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> no when I pulled it up, I was like, man, this might not work because uh, you must have like the not safe for work features thing. Oh yeah, thing, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, no, it yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that screen. <laughs> that looks a little loose. <laughs> Wow. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right, by the way, while you do this, are you allowed in casinos? Uh, you know, I I had I worked at a casino for so long because I worked with David Copper. That's right. At the MGM. So but are you yeah, allowed to gamble? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really gamble that much, to be honest. It's, uh, um, uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff with cars, but it's, it's something. So I, I guess I, I like being in control of it. That there's something about. Not so you're not as a magician. You're not a psychic. So you're not gonna like pick lotto numbers and. Well, we do. I mean, you still yeah, I saw you pick numbers, but uh, do you, you don't play numbers? You don't? No, I don't. I don't. It's funny. I don't take the chances. I just I'd rather be. It's so bizarre. Like you, literally, I watched you do numbers. It's toying with the magic, though, Breeze. Messing with the craft, yeah, right? It's probably like you can't break the rules. Yeah. Uh, so we're not gonna rob banks together, me and you. We're not gonna. <laughs> well, who wants to do this next one? I'll do it. All right. Actually, you can Rosenberg's got to go to the show too. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. You can put your phone away for a oh, second. Oh, phone away, all right. Um, let's see. Actually, we can, we can use everybody. Let's use All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just... Yeah, maybe. One of his fixed decks. Seen this before. No, no, no. <laughs> all the cars are mixed up, normal, everything's. Uh, let's see here. Okay, these are about four, four piles of cards, generally about the same size. It's all right if they're not. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, I want you to point to two piles. Um, these two. All right. These are going to be yours. Okay. These are going to be mine. Okay. Uh, we're going to shuffle the piles together, but we're not going to do it in a normal way. Uh, we're going to make it a little bit more more interesting than that. Um, these are my two piles. Uh, which one do you want me to turn over? I'm going to shuffle one pile face up into face down. So which one do you want me to turn over? This one. This one. So I want you to watch this carefully so you can see that they are definitely going face up into face down. Yep. Those cards that are mixed together. All right. Okay. Same thing. I want you to point to another pile. This one right here. We're going to, again, mix them together, but one's going to be turned over. So which one do you want to turn over? What do you mean? One of the piles going to yeah. turn over? Uh, um, this one. This one. Same thing. You can see they're all different. <laughs> Laura gets so excited. Look, for nothing. Nothing's even happened yet. Laura's excited. Shuffle them face up. <laughs> Into face down. Okay. Just like that. And one last time. Last one. Which one do you want to turn over? This one. The big one this time. Yes. All right. So, same thing. He did. Cool. Of course he did, because he knows face eventually up. I'm going to get bored. He knows me. <laughs> he knows so that, I mean, that was interesting. You went two times the same time. Last time you switched it up. So these go. Sort human of behavior. He studies human behavior. Face up into face down. Now, uh, you can see there's, you know, some face up cards, some face down cards. Yeah. I want you to place your hand uh, on top of the deck. And just to sort of recap, we took four piles of cards, yep. mixed them, uh, and then you chose two. We mixed those together face up to face down. Uh, and then you chose another one. You could have chosen the other one. If you had chosen a different one, we would end up different cards face up, face down. And the last one, again, you chose to turn the big one that time. So if you had chosen the little one, there would be different cards face up, face down. Uh, but you made all, all the choices. Here. Yes. Um, would you be impressed if right now, under your hand, all of those cards turned the right way? I'd be surprised because I just saw that they were not that you way. You saw they were face up, face down. Let's take it even further. We're going to not only make it the chaos go away, but we're going to make the chaos turn into something that's actually very organized. Uh, point to somebody here. It doesn't matter. OK. Put your hand on top of the deck. It happened. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Lift your hand up. Okay. Lift your hand up. We're going to spread the cards. They were supposed to be normal. Oh. Huh. It didn't happen. Well, well, you got it. You brought us a fraud. They so. did not bring a fraud. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Ebro. Yes. Does this make sense to you at all? 
Nine Ace Yo, that's my phone number. No, that's my not. phone number. No, it's that's not. my phone number. <laughs> Swear to God, that's my cell phone number. Hold on. Pull up his phone. I have your cell phone number right here. I have to blur some of these yeah, out. Yeah, 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 you gotta blur these numbers out, son. Hold on. Hold on. I'm a check. Is it right Ebro's now. number? Is Hold on. Because Ace is one. Yes. Okay. Okay. <gasps> that's your phone number. Yeah. Oh my that's God. bugged out. That is bugged out. He did it. Okay. No, no, no. I'm dead ass serious. Okay, Why do you do have one. my phone I number? I want to do one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna deal the cards real slow, real slow. Okay. Um, and and yeah. And just say stop whenever you want. Sorry. Stop. Wait, wait, which one? Stop, that one. That one, okay. Uh, let's see, how many cards did you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. Uh, I want you to look at that card, remember what it is? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to get this mic in. This might roll off. Okay. Uh, you got the card, remember? Yeah. Um, just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Put the card right there. You, got it. I, you know what? It doesn't even matter if I know it. The thing is, uh, if we put it in the middle of the deck and just snap, your card slowly rises to the top of the deck, just like that. Was that yours? Mm-mm. It was not it. Mm-mm. Hold your hand out. If we take the two, when you put your thumb on top of it, uh, we'll try it again, just like that. And what happens is your card, was that your card? Mm-mm. It wasn't the ten. No. It wasn't a two, it wasn't a ten. No. Uh, what was your card? Joker. The Joker, interesting. If I take the ten, just like that, what happens is now the ten becomes the two. And if this is the two... <gasps> no! <laughs> no! Look, no! <laughs> You're not doing it? You're not playing with it? Nah, black people are like, nah. No! No! Oh, hell no! No, no, absolutely not. Rebecca just, she said, that was, your reaction was priceless. People are fainting in the background. Of course the Haitian lady goes, where's the chicken? Ain't nobody cut no chicken in. Wow. Let's keep going. All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Let Ebra do one. I don't know, B. You might want to stay over there. You know my phone number. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. Uh, can you touch one? Just touch one. That's this one right here. Yeah. Can you take that out. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's, we took one match out of the, the, the match pack. All, mm-hmm. the, the, all they're all normal, right? Not very many left. Um, I'm going to take this match, the one that you chose. I want you to hold out your left hand. Okay. Or if they hold it flat. Oh, he about to burn your ass. He's tight. Oh, he bugging. He wilding. Dan's wilding, y'all. He went too far. He just went too far. You feel that? Can you feel it? You feel anything? It's a little warm. You felt it? It's a little warm, right? Yeah. Open up your hands. (laughs) Open up the matches. It's a burnt match inside for sure. It's definitely a burnt match inside. That wasn't there before. What's that? What's that? Oh wait, let, let's let's take it further. Let's That's the match back that was swallowed. It's so, the burnt match. Let's take it further. Hold your hand up. <laughs> uh, I want you to hold the matches this time. Squeeze it was warm around. when I felt it. We're gonna do the same thing, but a little bit differently. Uh, it's time, Evo. If you were mine, actually. Yeah. I'm gonna go through the cards. I just want you to say stop whenever you want. All, all right. Stop. Right there? Yeah. Take a look at the card you stopped me at. Remember it? All uh, right. Show it to the people, them. Yeah. Got it? Yep. Got it? Everybody got it? Go on this Yeah. Yep. Cool. I'm going to slide it into the deck somewhere. Inside. Anywhere. Cool. So that's fair. I mean, now you could have put that anywhere. Yeah, no, I, I cut low. I cut low. Sticking it out anywhere. I'm going to shuffle the cards up. All right. 
I'm gonna try to find uh, find your card. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna try to do it with five guesses. Okay, and I know that. I mean, that does, that seems like I should be able to get it in one, but five out of fifty-two is not bad. So we're gonna take five guesses. Here we go. Uh, I'm just going to show you the cards. If, if you see it, don't say that you see it. Okay. After the fact, I'll ask you later. Okay. Uh, so we've got the five of spades, mm -hmm. the ace of hearts, mm -hmm. the king of hearts, mm -hmm. uh, the three of spades, mm -hmm. and the four of diamonds. Mm -hmm. one of those five? I'm supposed to confirm or yes, deny? Yes or no? Yes, I don't, it is. Don't tell me which one it is. Yes, one it of is one of them. Five. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Do you remember what position your card was in? Uh, um, um, yes. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Watch close. Put your hand on top. Lord got the magic touch. For the first time, what was the card? Mm hmm Say it. Oh, King of Hearts. King of Hearts. Yes. Did you feel it that time? No. Lift up your hand. See, because now there's one, two, three, four cards. What? Okay, that's bugged. But, uh... No. 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 But you just saw the King of Hearts. Yeah, I was in there. The card was in there. Do you know where it went? No. Where would the most impossible place for that card to go right now? Oh, my gosh. Up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. That's not the most impossible. The most impossible place is a yeah. place where we've all been looking. That's been staring us in the face the whole time. It'd be pretty amazing. Open up. Oh, no, it's just a match pack. Oh. But wait, open up the match pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The peanut gallery's losing it. Yeah. Peanut gal get a shot of the peanut gallery. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yo, Dan, this is oh, amazing, Dan. bro. Oh, my God, Thank Dan. you, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. 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 Thank you oh, so my much. God, that, that was so cool. cool. Thank you so much, Hey, man, Dan. blur out my phone number, yeah. man. <laughs>